What's up guys? Welcome or welcome back to the channel. I'm James and this is Clearwater Fishing and today we're talking about Minn Kota's brand new shallow water anchor, the Minn Kota Raptor. And we're going to be comparing it to the current shallow water anchor from Minn Kota is the Minn Kota Talon. We're going to see what they have in common and then compare their differences. At the very end, uh, I'll give a list of advantages for each. If this is your first time on my channel, make sure you smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell because not only do we talk fishing technology on this channel, we talk fishing techniques, even how to catch your very first bass, all sorts of topics and even some entertaining videos as well. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and that notification bell, that way you're notified when I post a new video. Now let's jump right into the Minn Kota Talon versus the Minn Kota Raptor. So quickly, we're going to run through the similarities between the Talon and the Raptor. The first thing that they have similar is they both support the one boat network, which really just means, hey, you can connect it to your Humminbird units. Second thing that they have in common is they both have a five year warranty, which is good because shallow water anchors typically take a little bit of a beating. Third thing these guys have in common is that there are multiple ways to control the unit. You have the Humminbird unit, you have iPilot, iPilot Link, uh, the Talon has a control panel on it, and both units also have an app that you can also control with as well. Not to mention that they both have wireless foot remotes and also a handheld remote. All right, now let's jump right into the differences. Uh, this is probably the part most of us have been uh, more intrigued about. Well, starting off with the Minn Kota Talon here, it cost $2,000 for the 10 foot unit. And on the other hand, the Minn Kota Raptor, it cost $1,900 for a 10 foot unit. So a little bit of difference in cost there, you save about a hundred bucks if you're gonna get the Raptor versus the Talon. The next biggest difference to me is the available depths. So the Minn Kota Raptor is only available in eight and 10 foot, where the Minn Kota Talon is available in eight, 10, 12, and 15 foot. So you have a lot more options as far as depth goes for the Minn Kota Talon than the Minn Kota Raptor. Another difference here is the main function, how they work between the two. The Minn Kota Raptor uh, uses an articulating arm and it uses hydraulics to power it. While the Minn Kota Talon has a vertical deployment and usually in two or three stages, I can't remember, I think it's three stages on all of them, but in three stages it has a vertical deployment that uses all electric technology. I thought we were kind of over the similarities, but we have one more similarity in the modes that you can operate in. They both have a rough water, soft bottom, and standard operating mode. Now the Minn Kota Raptor also has a auto bottom mode and it also has active anchoring, which I'll get in that here in a second when I talk about the last difference on the Talon, which I'll speak about right now. The Minn Kota Talon has wave absorption. So as you have waves coming up and down, uh, raising and lowering your boat, it has a little shock absorption in there. So your talons will stay anchored and there's a little absorption in the talon to allow your boat to move with it. So you're not just yanking your anchors out of the bottom. From my research, the auto bottom feature works by how much pressure the hydraulic arm has to put on the spike driving into the ground. So it's able to detect what kind of ground it's going into just from how much work and pressure it's having to put on the spike. It's pretty easy to see that is an ease of use feature. So you can just leave it on auto bottom all the time. And regardless of the type of ground or terrain that you're on top of, it's gonna be able to drive the spike appropriately into the ground. The Minn Kota Raptor also brings another new technology called active anchoring which I don't fully understand how this works yet. I've done a little research and haven't found a whole lot of documentation on how it works. But from my understanding, it somehow can detect when your boat is moving out of place, even just a little bit. And my speculations here are it can, it can detect when the spikes are being flexed or something, or maybe they're raising up. Maybe it even uses the GPS coordinate system a little bit and anchors down a little harder 
when you're starting to move the boat, depending on the wind and the waves and that kind of thing that's going on. Maybe you got, you know, blown out by a wake and it's starting to move you around. It hankers you down a little better. The active anchoring does seem like a benefit over the Minn Kota Talon just because it can monitor how your boat is located and keep it in that location just by driving it further into the ground when you need it. Okay, I told you guys at the end of this video, I was gonna talk about some advantages of each. So here we go. The Minn Kota Raptor uses a hydraulic system, which is typically more powerful than an all electric system. So why is that? That's because it can use a gearing system to create a high amount of pressure to articulate that hydraulic arm. Now that's not always the case, but typically hydraulics are more powerful than an all electric system. Another advantage, it is a little more cost effective than the Minn Kota Talon, uh, just $100 cheaper for a similar size. The last advantages of the Minn Kota Raptor are the auto bottom feature, so you no longer have to select the type of bottom that you have, and the active anchoring that monitors how your boat is anchored and it adjusts its anchoring system for you. The Minn Kota Talon advantages here the first one is it seems to be a little easier to install because you don't have to deal with a hydraulic system. It's a plug and once you bolt it on, it's simply a plug and play technology where you plug it to the battery and plug it into your one boat network and you're ready to go. The next advantage of the Minn Kota Talon is that it uses a vertical deployment. So you're not articulating arms out of the water, uh, possibly hitting something or disturbing more water than you actually have to when you're fishing a shallow area. Another advantage that the Talon has uh, that I think kind of compares to the active anchoring is the wave absorption. So once you're actually anchored with a Talon, it's able to absorb waves and keep you anchored in without having to use the active anchoring system. So I think that's an advantage that kind of takes a little bit less advantage out of the Raptor, but I'm curious to see if that is actually the case. As I mentioned earlier, when I was talking about the available depths, you have a lot more depth options for the Minn Kota Talon than you do the Raptor, all the way up to 15 feet of depth, which is probably a huge advantage for you Northern guys fishing on those really deep lakes. And lastly, I don't know which one is gonna have better holding power, which one is gonna hold you on your spot when you're trying to fish somewhere shallow, when the water's rough, there's a big wake trying to blow you out of your spot, or the wind's just blowing on this point in just a certain location and you just wanna fish a certain targeted area. I don't know which one is going to hold you in place better, uh, mostly because I don't own either one of these. Uh, this has strictly been a features review. Let me know in the comments below which one you think is going to have better holding power and potentially which one are you thinking about purchasing. Thank you guys for watching my video and thank you for supporting this channel. But just like always, until next time, get out there and go catch you some fish.